So let us look at how the UTPR is applied when there are more than one UTPR jurisdictions, right? So in here we've got the parent, country A and country B. The parent is non-IIR country, so there's no um, income inclusion rule in parent country. So country A and country B have to apply the UTPR rules um, if there is any income from, from, from FINCO, right? And country A pays an interest of 200 to FINCO, <clears throat> country B pays 100 and then because we'll need it later you see that country A has full-time employees 100 and assets 1000 and country B has double that country B has 200 employees and assets of 2000 so let's see what the rules say first we'll go to what the FINCO net load income is and we determine that as we did before under article 512 and that comes to 300 because that's the totally interest income that it received. If we look at its effective tax rate, it paid 15 in tax. So we look at Article 511, it says 15 divided by 300 is 5%. And then if we look at the top up tax, that will be the, 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 the global minimum tax min, minus the effective tax rate under 521, and that will give us 10%. And then if you multiply the 300 with the 10%, you get 30. So FINCO's top up tax under Article 523 is 30. Now let's apply the UTPR rule. And the first uh, rule, Article 251, that we're looking at is saying the UTPR top-up tax amount shall be equal to the sum of the top-up tax for each low-tax constituent entity of an M&E group. Now in our M&E group here, we only have one low-tax constituent entity, and so we'll only look at the top-up tax for FINCO, and that'll be 30. But if we had four or five, we would obviously have had to all add up all of those together, right? And let's now look at how we apply this rule that we've just looked at. We know that the top up tax amount is 30. So how do you apply that under the UTPR? We first need to look at the, alloc at the allocation of the, of the top up tax under the UTPR, how it, how it works. Now, logic would say you take the 30 and you allocate 20. To country A and 10 to country B, but that's not what the wording of, of the new legislation says. The wording says the UTPR top up tax amount allocated shall be determined by multiplying the total UTPR top up tax amount, which is 30 in Article 251, by the UTPR percentage. Okay, and the UTPR percentage shall be here we go 50% of the FTEs in country A, if we look at A. Um, divided by all the UTPR FTEs, not all the M&E FTEs, not the group FTEs, but all the UTPR FTEs, right? And then you add to that 50% of the value of the tangible assets of country A, so that's OPCO 1, divided again by all the UTPR assets, and that will give us, for A, it will be 50% of 100 over 300, because that's it's got 100 out of 300 employees in, the, in country A and B plus 50% of 1,000 over 3,000, because it's, one, it's got 1,000 of 3,000 of assets um, in the UTPR country. So that is 16.5% plus 16.5%, giving you 33%, right? And country B would then be the difference, and it would also be 200 over 300 or 2,000 over 3,000, and that will give you 67%. Um, so that is how we're going to apply the allocation of the UTPR. And, and, and just for, for completeness sake, the text goes on to say that the total value of the tangible assets, we're talking A, tangible assets, not intangible assets, um, and then B, it is the sum of the net book values of those tangible assets, right? So we need to look at the book values of the net book values as that is defined in the legislation. Um, so now if we apply the UTPR in Article 241, and you see we keep on counting backwards, right? The, the way that, 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 that the law is uh, drafted is it starts with a conclusion and then it gives you the constituent ele elements, right? In, 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 in 25, uh, 241, it says that constituent entities shall be denied a deduction in an amount resulting in those constituent entities having an additional cash tax expense equal to the UTPR top-up tax amount allocated to that jurisdiction. So first we need to know from 241, what is the UTPR top up tax amount? Well, that is explained in 251, which is why I had 251 up here. 
And then when we know what the UTPR top of tax amount is, we need to see how it's allocated. And that is in 261, which is here above. And then we can go and cal calculate what the allocations are for uh, OPCO 1 and OPCO 2. And for OPCO 1, it will be the 30, which is the top of tax amount, right? Uh, multiplied with 33%, so it'll be 10. And its EBIT was, was, was 100. It needs to include 10 more in taxes. It's got an effective tax rate of 25%, so 10 divided by 25% is 40. So the EBT will increase to 140. And for OPCO 2, you do the same math, and it will increase to 180 because um, it has allocated 20 of the 30 to itself as, as UTPR top of tax amount. And, and, and that is strange, right? Because if we look at the payments, uh, OPCO 1 paid 200, but it gets 40 in, in additional taxable income. And OPCO, tax, uh, OPCO 2 paid only 100, but because it has double the amount of assets and double the amount of FTEs, it actually gets double the amount of UTPR top of tax allocated to its jurisdiction. I don't know what the political reasoning behind that is. I find it, again, a little strange because I would have expected that you would have allocated the UTPR top of tax based on the ratios of payments made by the um, by the UTPR countries, but that is not how I read the wording. 